Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about yet another unusual discovery in regards to the mystery that we can't really solve just yet. The mystery known as odd radio circles, simply known as orcs for now. And it looks like the scientists identified yet another unusual odd radio circle with this one providing a little bit more detail about what possibly forms them and how they are created in general. But it's still a huge mystery. But anyway, we already have so many different mysteries discovered in the last few years, and interestingly, a lot of them do have to do with radio frequencies. And although the biggest mysteries so far are still fast radio bursts, the unusual millisecond long burst emissions coming from every direction in the universe pretty much every single hour, the new mystery discovered only a few months ago are these orcs, odd radio circles. And a lot of these discoveries are simply made because our telescopes or our observatories have become so advanced that we can now see and detect things that were previously invisible. And this is exactly how the recent odd radio circle was discovered by the team whose paper you can find in the description below. They essentially combined the data from several months of observations, allowing them to uncover data that was previously sort of ignored or seen as noise. But first, so what are these odd radio circles and what do we know about them so far? This is going to be a really short review because we kind of don't know much. The original report was actually from December of 2020, and it was essentially a report about these unusual formations in the night skies that seem to be extremely large and also extremely far away, but because the distance is still unknown, we are not entirely sure how big they are. They also were only visible in radio waves, and that's actually really unusual. Normally, pretty much everything in the universe should be visible in different frequencies. For example, a typical nebula will be visible in X-rays, it will be visible in visual light, it will also be visible in radio waves. Even fast radio bursts occasionally also come with X-rays as well. But in this case, this was only visible in radio waves, and only in somewhat specific frequencies. Which is one of the reasons why nobody has ever seen them before either, until several Australian telescopes that had very advanced techniques looked at the night skies creating one of the best radio maps we have so far. Nobody really knew that any of these objects existed, and with new updates and also new analysis coming out pretty much every month now, scientists are going to be discovering even more of these unusual objects and possibly even more mysteries. But not a lot of odd radio circles have been found so far, and the ones that have been found seem to be maybe different. Some of them seem to have some galaxies in the middle, while others seem to be separated from everything. So it's not entirely clear if different events can produce these odd radio circles, but it's clear that something extremely powerful is responsible for making these. But what about this new odd radio circle? Well, this one, like two other odd radio circles, seems to have an elliptical galaxy, and actually an elliptical radio galaxy, with a relatively long name, and that also seems to be at a distance of approximately 2.6 billion light years away from planet Earth. And interestingly, the other two odd radio circles also had uh, these elliptical radio galaxies right in the middle of them. And because the chance of having three galaxies right in the middle of these objects is actually extremely, extremely low, the scientists currently think that at least some odd radio circles are very likely created as some sort of a massive interaction or some kind of an energetic event occurs in the center of these unusual galaxies. But unlike fast radio bursts that we're detecting from pretty much everywhere with quite a lot of frequency, odd radio circles don't really have a very large sample size yet, so it's very difficult to sort of explain what's happening here and especially make a confident prediction on what creates these objects, because right now there's just not enough observation and not enough of these objects have been found. But at least three of them do seem to have some kind of a correlation with a galaxy in the center, of course. And not just any galaxy. A radio galaxy. Now, the most famous radio galaxy close to us is Centaurus A. This is what it looks like in radio frequencies. And here's what it sort of looks like as a composite image combining radio frequencies and visual observations as well. But these lobes you see, these protrusions or these astrophysical jets, that's one feature that all radio galaxies seem to possess. And that is one feature that might help us explain what orcs are as well. For example, one of the most incredible images from Hubble telescope is the image of Hercules A radio galaxy. This is also an elliptical radio galaxy that produces these really, really long, millions of light years long astrophysical jets, making some of these galaxies some of the biggest galaxies in the universe. I've actually even talked about one of these galaxies that's the record holder in one of the previous videos somewhere right there. And because all of these elliptical radio galaxies seem to possess these jets, one of the best explanations so far for what orcs might be is basically 
if we're maybe looking at these galaxies from this perspective. Or in other words, okay, if this is an astrophysical jet, imagine if we're actually looking at it from this angle right here. Technically, this would maybe resemble a very large radio circle. Now, this is one of the possible explanations, but definitely not a very conclusive explanation just yet. The other potential explanation is in regards to extremely massive black holes colliding and very likely interacting in such a way that it essentially produces a very large explosion-like event that then ends up producing some sort of a circular-like formation, but in reality it's actually a sphere. But this is unfortunately something that is going to be almost impossible to prove or to show, unless of course we run some kind of a simulation on a supercomputer and prove it that way. Lastly, it could also be some kind of an interaction with the intergalactic medium between the galaxy itself and the maybe gas or some other material in between galaxies that's essentially producing almost like an echo that's in radio waves. In some sense, this would be very similar to how a regular nebula is produced as well. There's a very powerful source in the middle that irradiates all of this gas around it, and this gas then emits this light that we see as a nebula. So maybe this is actually what we're seeing here as well. Something from the center of the galaxy is somehow illuminating the gas around it, and that gas then starts producing these radio emissions. Which would of course also mean that this is almost like a halo of the galaxy, and we're basically just seeing the results of the observations from this halo. And so if this is actually what's happening here, and if this galaxy right here is indeed associated with this entire circle that you see here, then the scientists predict that the size of this object is probably around 1 million light years across. That's a little bit less than half of a distance of Milky Way to the Andromeda galaxy. Or to help you visualize better, if this is the Milky Way galaxy, right now we're at a distance of about 1 million light years away from the Milky Way. So it would be this big. But that's of course assuming that the galaxy and the odd radio circle are related, because there is no way for us currently to estimate the distance to the odd radio circle, it's only an assumption that it's maybe related to the galaxy. It's a pretty valid assumption, but assumption nevertheless. Although in terms of simplicities, and I guess in terms of logic, the best explanation right now does actually just involve these really large projections from a typical radio galaxy, and we're maybe just looking at it from a certain angle. But honestly, at this point, because it's only been a few months since the original discovery, it's still almost impossible to tell what's going on. So for example, even after a decade, we're still not entirely sure what produces fast radio bursts. We know magnetars can produce them, but not all of them. And so even that is still a mystery. So whatever our radio circles are is probably going to stay a mystery for at least a decade from now as well. Which also means that it's going to be an exciting decade of radio astronomy. And because of all of these new discoveries, it will also help us understand the universe around us a little bit better. But unfortunately for now, these little things are going to stay as a mystery for just a little bit longer. Still very exciting and still super interesting to read about and to kind of follow along on this journey of trying to figure out what exactly is forming these and what exactly they are. Anyway, until we learn more or until the scientists publish another paper, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.